This tutorial is an advanced demonstration on how to perform total protein normalization using ImageLab software. The first step is to acquire the images. Once we acquire the images, we need to link the images by creating a multi-channel image. In our example, we will link a multi-channel triplex to a stain-free image of the same blot. To create the multi-channel image, go to File, Create Multi-Channel Image. This brings up a window with the open images that can be used to create a multi-channel image and the channels available in the right. For our example, we will drag the Dylight 800 and Starbright 700 images into channels 1 and 2 and normalize those against the total protein image. Then we will click OK. ImageLab has created a multi-channel image of our three images including an overlay image of our stain-free blot and bands of interest. The multi-channel overlay is not required for analysis, so we will remove it by clicking the RGB button. Although not required, we will also invert the Dylight and Starbright images by clicking the Image Transform icon. Under Channel 1, we will click Invert Image Display. We will then select the Channel 2 radial box and also select Invert Image Display. Finally, we will close the image transform by clicking the X in the upper right corner. We will make it easier to complete the analysis by temporarily hiding the Dylight and Starbright images. This is done by clicking the C1 and C2 buttons. To enlarge the remaining stain-free blot, we will click the Fit to Window button. The next step is to find the lanes in our stain-free blot. This is done by selecting Lane and Bands in the Analysis Toolbox on the left-hand side. In this scenario, we are going to manually detect the lanes. We will do this by selecting the Manual Lane Finder button on the toolbar. For our gel, we have 10 lanes. At this point, we can resize the frame to line it up with the lanes on the stain-free blot. Make sure the frame covers all of the protein on the blot. We will also adjust the frame to match the band contours at the bottom of the gel. To do this, we select Adjust Frame. Next, we right-click on the bottom of the frame and select Add Anchor. Now we can select the anchor to adjust the frame. Next, we will adjust the individual lanes. This is done by exiting the frame mode by clicking the Adjust Frame button. Now we can adjust the lanes by simply clicking on the lane that needs adjustment. When the mouse cursor is in the middle of the lane, it will become a double triangle, and we can drag the lane from side to side. To change the width, drag over one of the anchors on the side of the lane. The cursor will become a double arrow, and we can adjust the width. To make the lane contour to wavy band, simply select the anchor points in the middle of the band. Now that we are done adjusting the lanes, the next step is to verify that the background profile in each lane is similar. This increases the accuracy of the normalization. To do this, we click the Adjust Background button. In most cases, ImageLab's default background subtraction will be correct, but if more or less background needs to be subtracted, this can be done with a subtraction scroll bar. If you do change the default background settings, make sure to apply them to all lanes. Scan through each lane and make sure the gray section underneath the red line is similar for each lane. Now that we are done verifying the background subtraction is correct, we will close the lane profiler by clicking the X. We will now redisplay the Dylight and Starbright images. This is done by clicking the C2 and C1 buttons and clicking the Fit to Window button. Now we are ready to complete total protein normalization. Under Normalization, select Stain-Free Blot. A dialog box will appear asking to redetect lanes and bands. Because we are manually detecting lanes and bands, select No. Next, select a normalization lane. This should be a lane that does not contain a protein standard. For our example, we will select Lane 2. Once we have selected our normalization lane, we will sync the normalization lanes by clicking Sync Normalization Lanes. 
In our scenario, the stain-free blot and the triplex were not captured at the same time, so they do not line up exactly. That's okay. We can make minor adjustments to the frame so that our lanes line up with the bands of interest on our blots. Now that our bands of interest are lined up within the lanes, we can use ImageLab to detect the bands. This is done by selecting bands in the toolbar on the left hand side and selecting detect bands in the band finder. Choose the appropriate sensitivity and click detect. If ImageLab fails to find a band automatically, simply add the band manually by clicking add and select the bands that were not captured. We can verify that the bands were captured correctly using the Lane Profiler tool. The band of interest will be displayed as a peak. The parts of the peak that will be included in the analysis will be highlighted in green. Repeat this process for the Starbright image. We will again use the Lane Profiler to verify the bands were correctly identified. In the event you want to remove or add a peak to the analysis, you can hold Control key on your keyboard and click on the peak you would like removed or included from the analysis. You can also adjust the amount of peak that would be included in the analysis. Do not detect bands on the stain-free blot. This will generate unnecessary data in the analysis table. We are ready to view the data. This is done by clicking the Analysis Table button at the top of the screen. This will bring up information about each lane including band number volume intensity before normalization, normalization factor, and volume after normalization. Because lane 1 was our standard lane, there is no data for that lane. As we scroll down to lane 2, we see it has a normalization factor of 1 because we selected it as our normalization lane. We can export the data to Excel by clicking on the Export to Excel Analysis button.